Hello, Googleization Nation, and welcome to the whole you, work, home, life, a GGG Unleashed podcast with thought leader Joe Serio. In each of Joe's episodes, he's going to be raw and real with you on what it takes to be the whole you at work, home, and life in order to thrive today and in the future. Enjoy the conclusion of this conversation with Joe Serio and Dennis Welch. Let's begin. Bruce Springsteen said, and he did a great AARP interview, and that it opens with him saying, I have kind of a weird job. I go into a writing room and I make something out of nothing. And he said, and sometimes it's hard to even take credit for it because it feels like it's flying around in the room and it just lands on me. But here's the important part of that, uh, that whole paragraph. Yeah, but Bruce, you were in the room. Mm-hmm. You weren't you weren't your easy chair or you you know you weren't somewhere where that can't happen. You gave it a chance to happen. And you know, and I think that's it that's a it's a piece that's missing apparently from the culture at large if 80% of us four people out of five are not are not in those roles where they can be great. It it gets worse as you get older, let me be clear. Pressure to to be put out to pasture is uh, stronger as you get older because there is there is ageism there is and so you know what and so uh, I'll just tell a quick story I have time so my so my next door neighbors uh, moved in right after we built our little house on the golf course and they built this giant house and uh, and I loved loved them and I love especially loved the guy he was a great neighbor I was hoping this relationship hope this relationship works out you know well. It didn't. They started a business together, and it all went to hell in a handbasket. So he moves away, and I don't see him for a while. Well, right at the top of the market, my neighbor, the lady who was left, sells her house, and she's moving. And Mike and her are still friends, and so I didn't know any of this. And so I'm out sweeping my garage out or something mundane, and I see this figure out of the corner of my eye running across my little front yard, and he picks me up and he hugs me so hard he almost breaks my ribs. I said, Mike, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? He goes, I just want to hug you, man. I want to tell you, I'm watching on Facebook what's happening for you and your music. And he goes, you know, and this, so there was this, this like this conversation up here for a minute, but then immediately it went really deep. He goes, he turns around, he gets really serious. He goes, he goes, can I tell you something? He goes, you're 65 years old. I'm 45. He goes, my nightmare is that. When I'm 65, I'm not doing any work that matters. Hmm. And I said, well, you know what, Mike? I said, let me, tell you, let me tell you some good news and some bad news, okay? I said, if you don't proactively plan right now to be doing work that matters when you're 65, the culture will sweep you out to pasture and you won't get a chance to do it. I said, but here's the, that's, that's, I guess that's middle news. But the, 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 the really bad news for control freaks like me, I said, first of all, you're going to have to leave the road of safety to do this. Safety, and I did that. I'd put quotation marks around it because it's not really safe. It just feels safe. I said, you have to leave the road of safety. You're going to have to cut your way through the forest. You're going to have to pave your own road. And here's the really bad news. You have no idea where this road is going. You don't. And I said, you know what? I said, you got to be brave to step. You got to believe in what you're doing to step out and do that because this is a scary deal. There's nothing comfortable about this, especially in the beginning. You know, when you start a business, look, we, Susie and I started Articulate with no, with nothing, with no customers or anything. And you know what? We just sat and looked at the phone and was hoping that it would <laughs> ring, right? And you know what? It did. It did ring. And when it started ringing, it hasn't stopped since then. I've never had to advertise. I've never been to Book Expo and handed out cards and all that in New York City. I haven't done any of those things. It's all word of mouth. It's all somebody saying, hey, Joe, I got a new book. You know, anybody does publicity and you recommend me. That's how it works. And so, but the, I, I contend that the reason it works like that, for me at least, is because I'm in the center of where I'm supposed to be. And I know it. And when I'm in there, there's no place like that. And, you know, it's, um, uh, and it's doable that, you know, that's the other thing I would say to somebody who says, you know, what, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I can do this. The answer is, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. You absolutely can do it, you know. And so what you need to do is you, if you have people around you telling you that you can't do it, you need to find some new friends 
Mm-hmm. You need to find a new group to be around that says, hey, you know what? I, I believe. And look, even if you fall on your face and you do this, you're going to know what you're not supposed to be doing instead of the 80% who go do what they're not supposed to be doing every single day, you're going to know that. And so that's mark that off the list and go find something else. And so, you know, a lot of success in, I think, in any area of life, you know, people say, well, he's a self-made man. No, he's not. A self-made woman. It's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, the people around us, you know, that say, hey, Joe, you know, I look, I was one of your encouragers. I, I, I knew you'd be great at what you were doing. But you know what? I, I'm probably just one of many. And, uh, and I think it's impossible if you have a bunch of naysayers around you going, well, you know, I don't know, man. Seems dangerous to go out on a limb like that. Well, their okay. fear is contagious. Yes. And you start believing it. Yes. And then you start, if, you, if, the, if the voice in your head is strong enough in a negative way, mm-hmm. you start saying, oh, my God, maybe they're right. Oh, that's right. I shouldn't do this. Oh, I have bills to pay. Oh, my, I couldn't. But, Joe, the lack of fear is mm-hmm. contagious, too. Mm-hmm. Encouragement is contagious. And I know this. You know, that's what Why Not Me is all about. That's where that song came from. Because I'm the guy in my group that, that says, what are you talking about? You think somebody should should go? There, people should be better at roofing houses. Why not you? Why not? Why don't you go roof houses and be better? Be the best house roofer in the world. You know. You said something earlier about the path, right? And you have to blaze a path. I read something recently that's uh, that stuck with me, and it said the only path in your life is the one behind you. Mm-hmm. That's the only path That's you know. Interesting. It's the only path you know. It's the it's the it's the ground that you've already trod, mm-hmm. and what's up ahead is really dependent on you. Mm-hmm. When I left the university, part of my brain was, you know, oh, I have to just. I think I was making three and a half thousand dollars a month or whatever it was, mm-hmm. right? So in my head, I said, oh, I just have to make three and a half thousand dollars, and then I get out and I realize, oh, they were paying my insurance also. Okay, now I have to make. You know, four thousand dollars a month. <laughs> right. Oh, you have to make five thousand dollars, and then you start realizing it, and you start getting into that space. Somebody said to me, "The money is really, really important as a metric, as an indicator of whether you're executing. Not for the money, not for the materialism. Mm-hmm. It's a metric that helps you to measure: Are you executing? Are you not executing?" Did you make the number of calls you need to make every day? Did you do the things that you're supposed to do in order Mm -hmm. to run your business? Whatever. And I'll take the money from that perspective, from a metric, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so when I left the university, scared as anyone else, and I started playing this game, I said, okay, you know, I have to to make $5,000 a month, and I'm just going to play this game, and I'm going to do whatever. And and after a few months, like, oh, that was easy. Mm -hmm. And then you start playing the game at more levels, right? I have to make $10,000 a month and 15000 What do I have to do to make that money? Mm-hmm. Here's the kicker. I couldn't see any of those things sitting in the university. Nope. I couldn't see the opportunities. I couldn't see the games. I couldn't see the gaps in the market, the niches that need to be filled. My partner and I developed a whole niche in training mm-hmm. that needed to be filled because it was obvious and all of a sudden, we're running all over the country. Right. I couldn't see it from where I was sitting inside safety. But think how scary that is. So you had to build it on the fly, learning as you go, having conversations with people out there in the real world in a place that you would never have touched if you had stayed in the safety of, you know, academia. But Dennis, I'm too anxious. I don't like to talk to people. I don't know how to talk to people. I can't do this. Right. And a lot of people have that anxiety. Right. And they've created this thing in their heads. You notice that all your characters sound the same. All my characters <laughs> whine the same way. So, so and, I, and I'll give you an example, a quick, quick story. I was at UT. I was going to a meeting, one of these morning networking things. And I walk in the room. There's 75 people in there. I don't know a single one of them. My anxiety starts getting into me. I'm, I'm short of breath, and I'm like, I'm not doing this. And I physically turn to leave. And the vo- other voice in my head said, dude, you do this for a living. Get back in there. Right. You deal with fear. You wrote books on fear. You lecture on fear. Get back in. And the thing that I did to help my creativity is to create a game. And the game was... 
who is the group of people in this crowd smiling and laughing the most? And I found four or five women in their 60s and 70s. Right. And I walked right up to them and I said, hello, ladies. I was looking for the friendliest, most fun group in this room. And it's you guys. And they said, <laughs> oh, my God. And they was so happy. All the ice is broken in half a second. Mm -hmm, sure. And all the nerves are gone and all the fear is gone. And I met somebody who had written a book on emotional intelligence. And I had also written a book on emotional intelligence. And I and we. What are the chances? Uh, you know, 100 percent. 100 percent. Right. All of a sudden. And this is what people who, who are, aren't paying attention to creativity don't know. And all these lines start showing up. Mm hmm. And all these intersections that you couldn't have imagined before, mm -hmm. and all these opportunities that you couldn't even you couldn't even say, "Oh my God, I could never have that. I could never do Nobody that." Nobody is that strategic, Joe. Nobody. Nobody mm -hmm. is that strategic. You know, look, I, I wake up every day, and I'm thankful to God that I get to do what I get to do every day. But look, this people ask me, and they go, "How did how did this happen?" I'm I'm not that strategic. But here's one thing. So you know, I I toured around my last year with Gallup. I toured around with John Maxwell. And one of the things that he is famous for saying, and it's absolutely true, is that people don't pay for average. They don't. You know, they, they, don't, they don't want somebody who's just good enough. They, they want to pay for somebody that's going to do something special for them, right? <clears throat> and, and I would contend <clears throat> that average is what you get when you settle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, uh, and so you talked about, one of the things you said about meeting those people. So have you ever taken the Myers-Briggs? No. Okay. Have you ever taken the Strengths Finder? Yes. Okay. So you've at least taken you've taken some things to help you get to know yourself. You know what? It takes a little time and it costs money to do those things. But but those uh, and while you know people are much more complicated than some instrument. You know, just because it says that you're you know that you're an I on the you're an introvert on the Myers Briggs doesn't mean that you necessarily are. Mm -hmm. But 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 you know what? But so so. Take some time. One of the things, I, first thing I'd recommend is, look, you don't know yourself probably because you're because you're busy. It's all incoming. Get quiet somewhere and get to know yourself. One of the things I would recommend people do uh, is to, is to take the Strengths Finder. It's it's pretty. They've done millions of them now. It's very accurate. You know, I, I would take look when I started graduate school in '95. I they made us take the Myers Briggs and they gave us a little booklet we brought home with it. And Susie read it aloud and was just stunned. She goes, it feels like they followed you around, man. Mm -hmm. So I'm an INFJ. Well, I, INFJs give all the signals of being an extrovert. But the truth is we're introverted. It wears me out to be in a room full of people I don't know. It, mm -hmm. it totally does. But when you know this is your calling, when you, have, when you say, listen, I have to do what I'm here for. I can't waste any time, and especially now I'm sixty. I'll be sixty-eight in January. I, I gotta, I gotta get on with the whatever I'm gonna do, right? And so I don't have time to walk into a room like that and give in to that fear that that wells up every time. I, I want to find people I already know and and talk to them. I don't want to have to go meet a bunch of strangers. But you know what? For my mission, I'll do it every day. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, there's so all of these ancillary benefits from finding that piece of that thing that you're here for, it, it quells a lot of the things that bug you and your fears and stuff because you go, you know what? Screw that. I, I'm, going, I'm going in, you know, and you go in and then, like you say, all of a sudden you start bumping into people. What are the chances, you know, of you bumping into somebody who is, has written a book about what you've written about? Mm -hmm. That's The chances seem like zero. <clears throat> Look, from the very beginning, one of, the, one of the themes in my life is that at the very time I needed somebody, really, really needed them, they showed up, and, and without me seeking them, without me going and finding them, they just showed up. But they didn't show up until I was already stepped out in faith and what I believe and moved forward. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's you know, Kemper Crabb who produced my first two albums. You know, he, he's influential, so influential that I still send everything to him that I record because of one conversation that we had uh, that, was, that changed my creative life. Where was that guy? Where, how would I have found him? Right. You know what? He just showed up. And so, and then, you know, later on, Alan Chamblin and so many others, uh, this guy who's producing my stuff now, Rich Herring, how, how would I have found him? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know exactly what he did, to be honest with you. And so that's, uh, that's what happens. There's, 
there's a there's a multiplier uh, effect in stepping out and saying. I am not going to do what I've been doing. I'm going to do something different. And okay. So let's take a minute. Let's okay. take a literal minute because that's okay. all we have left. I'm sorry. Is to, is to, <laughs> is to just put in a nice package. When, when people think about creativity, what does that mean? So, so what are the things that people can do to access, to tap into, to enhance the creativity? Well, uh, first of all, you have to not try to be somebody else's version of creativity. In your heart, you know. You know when you sit down to write a book. You know, your stuff is brilliant. You know, I, I'm never going to be Joe Serio, okay? And so I shouldn't aspire to be him. But I, I've got to figure out what it is that I do creatively that I, that I can do every single day and have, take joy in and feel okay about at least, right? And so, um, and so the first thing I would do... Number one is I'll get to know me, get to, get to know yourself, get to know who you really are, you know, not with your blind spots and all you got. Everybody has them. Get to know who you are. And then, you know, once you know who you are, then start, then get quiet and take some time and go back through your life and say, OK, what what really brought me joy? You know, uh, one of the smartest people I've ever known. Uh, I went to college with. He was two years older than me. He was, he was a genius. This guy was amazing. And he became an accountant. I'm like, what? What is he doing? He could be president of the United States and he's going to be an accountant? You know what? He knew exactly what he was doing. He wanted to be in a star at El Paso Natural Gas and retire with banks of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? He knew what he was great at. And so, but look, you know, this doesn't just ha happen by osmosis. Okay? Nobody just shows up and knocks on your door and goes, hey, Joe, you know what, man? I'm thinking maybe you could. Fill in the blank. No, it happens because you go out and try some things and don't be afraid to fail. That's the other part. So be yourself. Don't be afraid to fail. I hate to end this conversation, but I have to say one last thing. When uh, I came in here, a coffee cup was put in front of me that said, be yourself. <laughs> Everyone else is taken. Yeah. It sounds like a great first step for dealing with creativity. Mm. Uh, I would love to continue this conversation for hours. I'm sure we could. Thank you so much for joining us for these three sessions on creativity. My guest has been Dennis Welch. This is, what's the name of the show? <laughs> <laughs> no, why are you asking me? <laughs> the whole you work home life. I'm Joe Serio. Take care. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and digging deep into what's ahead for the future as the whole you. We'll be back next month with Joe for another episode. But until then, visit his website for additional information at joeserio.com. And remember, don't let the ship hit your plans.